Craig Adams here from WeddingFilmSchool.com and today I'm going to show you how I kind of manage all of my hard drives and back up my footage for wedding edits. Uh, so I made this graphic that kind of shows everything that I use, what it is, and what I use it for. Um, and you know, the whole process I've kind of broken down into six steps. Uh, dump, backup, process, edit, archive, and delete. Um, so the first step, dump, you know, pretty much just means that you take your media cards, all the footage that you shot at the wedding. I don't like to, you know, format or do anything so I have enough media for the shoot. I shoot all of it onto the cards. I put it as, you know, the cards fill up into this Think Tank media wallet. And then the morning after I have all of my footage in that wallet, I take it and uh, that's when I dump the footage onto this backup drive. So uh, the second step back up is where I make, you know, the project folder with all the raw media on this backup drive. So this four terabyte, which is right here sitting on my desk with all the Zacuto and GoPro stickers on it, large capacity, it's got four terabytes. Uh, it's RAID, so it can be fast or protected, or RAID one or zero. Uh, the fast transfer rate is because uh, it's Thunderbolt connected with a cable. Uh, it's connected to this MacBook Pro. And uh, like I said, it just holds all of the uh, backup uh, folders. So as you can see within here, I've got all these different projects that I'm backing up and I mark with gray. And uh, this is the most recent. Uh, so I make a media folder that has like video split into shooters, all the raw photos, and then all of the raw audio. So this is like just the most original basic version of all of the media that was shot at the wedding. Um, so this is like a good backup. Um, you know, this isn't going to change as I edit, which is good because I can just keep it as a backup safe and sound. Whereas the project folders, which, which will be changing as I edit, will be on another hard drive. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is 122 gigabytes, which isn't too bad. Um, and yeah, I've got a bunch of those on here and I kind of delete them as I, you know, I finish the projects, but it's good to have multiple backups and uh, especially different versions like the original versus the edited versions. So, okay. So then the second, no, well, the third process would be process. Um, it's, it's where you take Final Cut Pro, you open it, uh, and then you import all of this for, you know, the project files from the backup. So we're bringing and we're making a new folder on what I call a four terabyte project. So this drive right here, this is my ultra portable drive. Um, I love it cause it's small. I can take it anywhere. As you can see my MacBook, like I use a MacBook pro. So I like the idea of being able to be portable yet also being able to close it, pl plug it in with all the ports, have the wireless keyboard and mouse and then the ultra wide monitor so I can do desktop editing with you know the hard drives that I keep here. But then I can also unplug it and take it with me, do a same day edit somewhere, throw it into a backpack and just have my computer, you know, and not have to transfer the files between two computers or change settings. You know, I just have one computer with everything and a bunch of hard drives. And uh, yeah, so this is ultra portable. Um, the RAID allows for fast editing. Uh, there's no power cord, which makes it very easy to use. Um, and uh, it's very fast because it's transferable, uh, has a transfer rate with Thunderbolt. Um, and like I said, this holds my current projects. So if we go to that, uh, you can see the different colors, green, yellow, orange, red, uh, pertains to like the percentage of it's completed and it just helps me visually. And then these are larger sizes. So that has to do with the process. So, you know, when we import the raw footage from the backup into Final Cut Pro, we make a new folder on the project hard drive because this is where this is the only place that we're doing our editing these this is keeping the footage safe in an original form but this is where we do the editing because this is fast and portable and easy to use um, yeah so you can see that these the like the new project folder the main uh, container within it is this Final Cut Pro X file so this is what's made when you import the footage and uh, when you import the footage, what we're doing is we're clicking, you know, make optimize media, uh, which means we're making the ProRes 442 or 422, uh, which makes Final Cut, it just, 
much easier for it to edit and work with the footage. So if your editing is slow, just make sure that you're using you know, the footage optimized for Final Cut Pro. Uh, the, the size is gonna go up, so you can see 100 and almost 200 gigabytes for this. this. And technically, you know, this is the only thing we need within this project to edit it. Um, because it made all new files and everything is contained within this single file here, this, this container. Um, and as like one thing you should know is you can show package containers so you can actually see the transcoded high quality, what they call the optimized media here. Um, so if we go back, technically I don't need these other three folders here, but I just like to have them because I have the extra space. I've still got, you know, 2.7 terabytes free. So I just like to have duplicates of duplicates if I have the space. So I've got all those projects and, uh, the fourth step is to just edit, you know, you're using Final Cut Pro and as you edit it, uh, automatically makes backups of your project folders and you can control where it places those. And I found that you, if you have a Dropbox and, uh, usually enough space to start off with the free edition, um, to save those backups for Final Cut in the cloud. So, it can hold all the backups of your Final Cut Pro project files. It automatically syncs. You don't have to do anything once you set it up. And it's cloud protection, you know. Uh, it's gonna be safe if anything happens to your drives locally, fire, theft, whatever. Those drives, uh, the files are gonna be safe in the cloud. Um, and uh, you can see them just within my Dropbox folder. I've got my Final Cut, just about 600 megabytes. And you can see all the different projects that are all backed up and they're very small files so it's quick and easy to do and you know it's it's a good pre precaution that's free and easy so yeah we uh, pr finish editing the wedding film you know this project file for Final Cut X is probably gonna get bigger and bigger as you edit because it renders and makes those files and then uh, next is uh, archive so this is step five so this is my archive drive this is a four terabyte western digital it's a bit simpler you know it's only usb3 transfer uh, there's no raid it's just a standard spinning hard drive um, and uh, it holds all the completed projects so what i call archive projects so at my four terabyte archive you can see all of the green because these are completed projects and i put them in here and you can see that the most recent are usually the biggest, whereas the older projects are very small because as I need space, I actually delete uh, larger files and like the original media and all the raw original files and not the processed ones out of these to make room. So, you know, the older a project is, the more it kind of deteriorates naturally. Um, just to make room for the other projects and of course if I had like an 8 terabyte or a 12 terabyte I would have more space and more safety for older projects, but this is working for what I'm doing right now So I'm totally happy with this 4 terabyte process here and uh, Once again if I need to go back technically I have all the files that I could edit for like this Gabby and Sanford wedding uh, It's still got almost 400 gigabytes with the original and all of the ProRes files because I just throw everything in there once um, You know a project uh, reaches green completion You know what I would do is I would just take this put it into the archive and then I would take its backup and I would put that with it in the archive and then I could delete it off of this and then delete it off of my four terabyte uh, project hard drive. And uh, yeah, the last, you know, that's, that's really the last step delete. So I just, as I need room, which I still have space in this archive, I've got 1.7 terabytes free. So as I need space, I will just delete. So that's pretty much it. It isn't that complicated. Um, I'd just like to say that, you know, my MacBook Pro seems a little old, but honestly, I think a lot of the editing comes down to making sure that you have transcoded uh, uh, media and that your hard drives are fast, uh, both in like with the RAID or solid state um, or the transfer rate between, you know, the cable, Thunderbolt or USB 3.0. Um, if the hard drive is working and if you have transcoded uh, media, you know, you really don't have to have that crazy of a computer to do some good editing. You know, I, I'm very happy with this setup. So um, if you have any comments or questions about this whole setup, if some of this seems stupid to you or if you have any questions at all, just let me know uh, in the comment section below. 
Uh, tweet me if you have any other questions in general at, at uh, wedfilmschool.com. But until then, thank you for watching and see ya.